Would you like to have the Raspberry Pi tell you more about your house? Do you need to know about barometric pressure or humidity? Well, stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to use your Raspberry Pi and the Sensat to get this information. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Run Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about using the Sensat and your Raspberry Pi to watch your house. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notification. Here's what we're going to be dealing with in this video, and that's using your Sense Hat with the Raspberry Pi. We're going to go over the required parts. We'll talk about configuring the Raspberry Pi, and then we'll set up a mini web server so you can see the results coming off of the Sense Hat. This time, we're going to be dealing with something a little bit different. Up to now, we've pretty much done with the Raspberry Pi either what could be done in software or by plugging something with a USB interface into it. This time, we're going to leverage something called a hat, and that's what plugs into the Raspberry Pi. And it's this little card right here. If you've heard of a shield, that typically refers to something for the Arduino family. So the Raspberry Pi calls theirs hat. It will literally plug right in there and will take its power and all the communications after over the GPIO pin. Well, the first thing we got to do anytime we set up a Raspberry Pi is we've got to get the SD card made. So let's go ahead and move forward with that step. You've already seen this part or are well familiar with how to do it, you can go ahead and skip on to the next section using the chapter headings you're going to see at the bottom of the screen. I do this just for those who are not used to doing it or haven't done it for a while that you'll be able to go completely from A to Z to have this thing up and running. So we've already got the micro SD card plugged in with my reader. So we'll go over here to flash from file. Then we'll go to downloads. There is the Raspberry Pi OS. This is the one from January. They're probably going to, by the time I'm doing this video, they may already have a new one out, but I typically stay with what I know is working for a while just to make sure that we're not going to have any fun with unknown features that are coming into it. This will be through in just a minute and then we can move on. Now that we've got the card burned, if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know I'm big on making sure that I've got SSH access into the Raspberry Pi. Well, by default, the Raspberry Pi OS has that disabled. So what we're going to do is unplug and then plug the micro SD card with our trusty reader back in. And then we'll go over here to the drive and just anywhere in the drive, right click and go new text document. And then we will just erase that whole field and just put SSH in there with no file extension. That's how you get it enabled out of the gates so we can run this totally headless because I like to run my Raspberry Pi's headless if at all possible. And if you're not familiar with the term headless is when you're running it without a keyboard or monitor attached. So let's get this moved over and we'll get it booted up. If you are not used to working with the Raspberry Pi, you got if it's a brand new one or one you haven't used for a while, you'll need to get the IP address that typically can be obtained from your internet router for your home network. If you're not seeing it, by default, it will come up as Raspberry Pi or maybe just Raspberry depending on any any changes to it then you can take that IP address plug it in here and I'm gonna make the font a little bit bigger we'll say yes we'll log in as Pi and then Raspberry now we're set to go for the next part so we will do a sudo app get update and we'll make sure we've got the latest working information out there for any updates that we need to get then we'll go to do a sudo app get upgrade. Make sure you use the dash Y at the very end because that way it's going to make it go a little bit faster for you because you don't have to sit there and wait to be prompted for yes or no on downloading everything, which is what you want to do anyway. So it just saves you a step. Now there's two things we want to do before going any further and we're going to go into raspy config to do that. We first want to change the host name because if you if you're like me and I've got several Raspberry Pis up running one of the first things I want to do is change the host name and we'll just call this sense. Actually we'll call this sense hat because I have a device that is named sense from the company who sent it to me. So that's going to be, this will clear up a little bit of that confusion. So, okay. Then we will want to go down to localization. We want to set time zone because that becomes important when you're trying to debug any problems and you're looking at the logs and the time doesn't make any sense. So we'll go over here to Chicago. Well, that's the nearest one they've got in the list for me and hit okay. Finish. 
and yes we want to reboot because since you've changed the host name you're going to have to reboot i went and powered down the raspberry pi because i needed to plug the sense hat in just to make sure we had all place for this next part because i don't do want to start loading any modules and not have what we need so we're going to need to add a few pieces and that's going to be getting python installed and i didn't do that right so that's my fault and i didn't do a capital y which is why you always want to just do that dash y at the end no pun intended now that we've got Python installed, we'll need to actually install the software for the Sense Hat. And this is another good one where you should have put the dash Y on the end. I'll get that fixed in the notes for the video before this video goes up. Now, the next thing we're going to do is need to create a Python file, and we'll just call it weather.py. And since this is going in the directory of user pi that we're logging in as, then it's fine. We don't have to put sudo in front of it. And we can just cut and paste from the file area it's set up. Now, something to note on this one because where I found the directions from this had some problems and it took me quite a few times to figure out what was going on. This right here, this, this should be just a single uh, apostrophe. Hopefully I'm calling it the right thing. That in there, the font that I initially picked this up in had this as a left-leaning one and a right-leaning one and this doesn't work well. It, the Raspberry Pi OS and Python just doesn't like it. So what we'll do is we'll click on Control X and we'll say yes to save and just hit enter. And now we're, what we'll do at this point is we'll make a directory and it went by rather fast called templates this is where we'll actually put the code for what does the calculations sorry let me rephrase that this is what actually does the display because this has got all the html in it so this just gets you up and running to where it's a minimum of muss and fuss so we'll do control y yes for enter that part is ready to go the next thing we'll need to do is we'll actually need to start the python server so we'll just do python 3 space weather.py and the weather.py was the first one we created now, something to keep in mind, there was something that, you know, I'll use the term lost in translation. When you have this section that ends with a colon that's expecting several commands below it, well, what was giving it the heartburn is it was expecting the commands below def index, left paren, right paren, colon, to be indented. And they weren't. They were literally all lined up. That's where the formatting kind of had things mucked up. So the same thing, I made the change down here after the colon, this next line needs to be indented. I just indented it. I just indented it one character. So when we do Control X, we've already saved it, so we're fine there. Then we'll do Python weather.py. This has got it up and running. If you get this far, that's good. What we will need to actually let me stop one thing here. We do an if config because I want to make sure what my IP address is 234. Okay, 10.0.1.234. 5,000. That's got us with reading temperature and Fahrenheit. So that says we're up and running. Now, I have found that the temperature sensor isn't as accurate as I like, but when you consider it's a $40 board, it's not going to have a $1,000 sensor on it. And this is where when you go into the code and we'll look at, I believe it's weather.py that we want, you may need to do some tweaking with the lines that calculate Celsius and Fahrenheit, and you might be able to make some adjustments there. You know, going with a good known thermometer and then you can make your tweaks from here and it's not going to give you 0.00005 resolution but you at least want it to be within ideally a, a degree or two to get the sense hat to give you the information from the pressure humidity sensors you'll want to add these two lines to the raspberry pi then you'll go out here on the return sender line and just add the humidity equals humidity comma pressure equals pressure that gets this part of the python script to work now we will exit here and we will go to templates and make sure what our name is again. So nano weather.html. What you'll need to add to are these lines for humidity and pressure so that the mini web server that Python is setting up will be able to display that information. Once you've done that, so once you've got the changes made and then it's just a matter of starting the server, you'll see it come up with the line there. It says at 5,000. So we'll go over here we've already got that up and running it's already reading humidity and pressure when you're setting up that new account for the smart home cloud service or device please get a copy of my smart home device account checklist you see here on the screen this will help make sure that everything gets written down that you entered to get that account created the form will also serve as a backup copy when you get this entered into your password manager app and if you're not already using a password manager app please get one now and get started 
You will be subscribed to my email list in exchange for the checklist. I won't share, rent, or sell your information to anyone. Well, just as I was finishing the video of putting all this together, I, I wasn't really happy with the way the temperature sensor was reading out. And I thought it came down to a couple of things. The heat sink that I had on top of the CPU was very close to the underside of the sense hat. So what that would mean is it's going to have that board a little bit warmer, which means the temperature sensor would be a little bit warmer. So I had to kind of up my game plan a little bit. And that's what caused me to go to, I've got the box right here, to the Geek Worm case. And I'm, you know, I've already done uh, a video on this on my shorts channel, but this is what we're looking at in terms of something that's going to probably get the heat away the best. And also I'm not going to put on the heat sinks I normally do because we've got the thermal tape. So what you've got to do is, is figure out the best placement for, there's two different sets of thermal tape and you want to get one so that it's pretty much kind of under here into this, not quite the center of the board. You need to offset it just a little bit. So if we look at it, kind of side it in and that looks like, yeah, that looks like it's going to be a good place right about there. So we will take the plastic off of one side, lay it right down here. No reason, no reason to just add absolutely push the heck out of it but we'll get this in place then according to the excellent directions that are here which is what i'm going to be referencing we'll now go ahead and put in the raspberry pi and i went and just got a brand new one because i thought it was going to be easier to start with a fresh board than having to try to pry the heat sinks off the other way so what they suggest you do by the pictures is you put the screw in to the standoff which is actually a pretty good idea because what it's going to do is make it easier for you to get it installed on the board and excuse my big fingers the way they are here again you don't have to give this a king kong grip but at some point you'll feel it kind of give you some resistance and that's a good indication to back off now i'm going to go caddy cornered because i don't want to put too much undue stress on the board so we'll go over here get this one done and then we'll do number three not that it matters what order they go in on i was just trying not to put any extra stress on the board and unfortunately there's when i'm putting this down you screwing this in you really can't get a good view of what's going on now what we'll do here is then go ahead and get this last one in now i get to back all those screws out okay got all the screws we use to help tighten these in because if you had a nut driver with 50 you can see there's really not a whole lot of room to to be able to put it in now we make sure that you use that thick pad under the bottom of this board with this one we will use the thin pad and we'll lay it and that sets about just right so we will just put that in here and i'm not gonna worry about creasing it too much but actually we may have to to get this thing to fit right okay now once we've got that in we'll take off well, easier said than done I'm, there we go thin little plastic strip and that's a darn sight easier to handle than some of those uh, heat sink tabs are so now we will put this in and we've got okay i felt it a little bit of resistance just as i put it in so that yeah now that 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 thermal transfer pad is pretty much holding things in place now since we're going to be having some standoffs in here and we want to make sure that everything is transferring heat the way it should we're going to easily just put these back in and we're going to have to use the screws again i can kind of see that one coming so let's get the let me put this one back in here and you can see why it's easier to maybe do some of this before you get too far down the path here let's just go on to one of these and the nice thing with this geek worm case is it does a real good job at leaving access to all the pins area sticking up as well as the headers for display and camera and if you are going to be using this case with either one of those yeah probably want to put those ribbon cables in before you start locking the case down because there's really not a way you can slide them in afterwards without involving a lot of frustration so let's get this one down here one more set normally i would have gone to the black plastic standoffs i had but those were female female and with wanting to hold this down securely had to pretty much go with the copper ones they had so now we're going to take all these screws back out again now lesson learned on this one when you go to start backing out the screws that you use to help get these brass or copper pieces installed 
if these small pieces start backing out when you're backing the screw out, you don't have them tight enough. Again, just do it ever so carefully when you, you feel the first bit of resistance, maybe just a skosh more and then start backing your screw out. So now let's go ahead and get moved the micro SD card over and that goes in easily for that. And the car, even with the case in place, you still get a good access to changing the card out. And since I've got the standoffs, I'm going to first do a, a fit of this one and we'll see how well this goes. It is a little snug to one side, but you know what? I don't want it too loose and it sits right into those brass connectors. So I'm not going to worry about setting the screws in just yet. But now we're uh, ready to power up and see what happens. Well, now that we've got all the power hooked up and we've got the network cable, and that's note to self, I need to set it up for wireless. We'll do that to, after I get all this video shot. So we just got the power turned on. So now we'll start letting it go through its little bit of initialization process. 10.0.1.244. All right, that's good. And since I don't want to go look up the command I use to get everything started, I'll just use the history command, and this will tell me what we need to do. So first I'll do a screen bash. And i got another video coming on that. This screen command is something that, that you definitely want to, to use. And that allows you to disconnect from it, and whatever you had running is not going to go away. So let's do the history command again. And then we'll do Python three weather py and it should come up here okay that says we're good to go so let's go over here and open up a web browser http 10.0.1.244 5000 okay now it takes the the pressure barometric pressure sensor a little bit to come online Fahrenheit has dropped from what it was before, so it's doing good, and it's just a matter of it's got to start transferring some of the heat. And you can compare with the earlier parts of, okay, there's the pressure sensor. It's online now. So this is just a case of hurry up and wait and start seeing what is normal for your particular situation so that gets you that much closer to the process and this is just one of several things the sense hat can do like i said the temperature sensor is not the most accurate like i said for a 40 dollars board i wouldn't expect it to be now depending on the particular one that you get when you order this you might find your sensors a little bit more on target if not it's just a matter of modifying that one calculation basically just gonna you'll have to force a correction in there because there's not really a, a calibration process I've been able to find that gets this up and running. So this at least gets you to where you've got a sensor you can put anywhere in the house, certainly switch this over to wireless. And that way you don't have to worry about running anything other than a power connection and putting your Raspberry Pi in a case that will let it breathe and let the sensors be able to read what you're probing for them on the Sense app. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.